Hey folks, it's Brian. It's time for another Jeep video. So this is Jeep 66. Uh, and I got a fucking problem with the motor mounts. So I knew there was possibility that frame repairs might not be so easy. So I, I used a strap. I was able to drag this one over maybe half an inch. So I've got this one in. This is the one that was damaged. This is the side of the frame that was repaired. And what it looks like is um, the frame is out by about an inch and a half. So this should be here. And then of course I tried to force this down and I broke a bolt. Fuck my luck. It is what it is. So um, I gotta extract this bolt. And then what I've come up with is that I think I'm just going to move the damn engine mount on the passenger side because, you know, again, I've, I've already fucked this one up. But this is this has never moved. This one's stock. And um, the mount goes to here. So I think that's enough to support it. But we're going to we're going to kind of look at this. And I put in a call to Brown Dog and I just haven't heard back from them. Um, I was hoping he would have some thoughts for me because I can't be the only person that's ever done this. So that's my center point I'm marking. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crawl under here and I'm going to mark where the uh, bolt holes are. <coughs> So it's worth pointing out that I'm not an engineer, but I probably could have been one. I have a pretty good sense for structural design, and I usually tend to get shit right and overbuild it, which I call a good margin of error. So we're going to pop this thing out. Now, one of the things I like about this is these are relatively easy to take apart. You just twist and pull and the little rubber inserts um, come out. Uh, one of them's greased. I need to figure out what grease is compatible with this. So I need to drill a hole this size here. I need to shear this bolt off. There's some welds in here. These welds aren't anything I'd be proud of. And then I have to evaluate do I want to allow this much overhang? So if my force is downward, is this enough? I, you know, I think this needs to be backed up. I really do. So my other alternative is to cut a piece of metal to scab this. almost tempted just to weld the whole goddamn thing together and be done with it, but one day I might actually want to take this apart. Oh, it's all I can do not to just weld the whole fucking thing together and call it a day. Oh, it'd be so easy to do. So anyway, yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and go to the hassle of scabbing this. So I'm going to cut a piece of quarter inch material the footprint of this and um, it'll just bolt down in between it and it just adds some rigidity to it so that this piece can't sag. Um, you know, the flip side it's just a question of how much how much force is this enough force from the engine? If we're supporting this much of it, is this enough force? The the line should be here, not there. 
and certainly not there. Um, you know, it might be okay. It might be worth the gamble of just, hmm, fuck it and see what happens. The worst that's going to happen is it's going to drop half an inch. Um, if this had another support here, this would be an absolute non-issue. But right now my milling machine doesn't have three-phase power and it's still a project in and of itself. So I can't really do anything with this. If I had my milling machine running, uh, none of this shit would be uh, difficult. Um, so, yeah, any way, you, any way you do it, I need to drill a new hole here, shear this off, cut it off. Um, and so that's what I'm going to start working on. I, I'm going to get busy with that, and uh, let's see where it takes us. Yeah. So I'm gonna do some unorthodox stuff. I can't find my pneumatic oil. But I have all this mobile. Um, I have all this mobile 5W30 laying around. It'll be more than sufficient as air tool oil. I really should pour some in there, but I don't know where there's something to pour with. So this will work. In an ideal world, I would um, have a dedicated area for metalworking, but that's not the world I live in and that's not what I've got. So that's not how it's going to go. Um, I think I am going to do this differently though. I want to get this down lower. So I'm going to use, I've got my eyes protection on and I'm going to use the um, trash can as a backstop for all these. So let's just see what happens here. I wonder what the PSI is for this. it would help if I had it point the right way.
I need some benches. Get rid of this piece of shit toolbox. There we go. I need to back that up.
All right, so let's feel froggy. I'm more impressed that this piece of shit drill press actually cut through something or if I'm more or the crappy ass bit that was in it we're gonna send this bit to recycling that's a shitty bit probably Harbor Freight So, that doesn't look like it's lined up, but now it is. So, let's try another one. Well, that went surprisingly well. This is the right kind of bit. Um, we will find out here in a minute. see if this one would be. Uh, that's that's going to get us really close.
good. So we'll back it up with that. drill bit. So let's get this out of here. I'm not so worried about the junk drill bits because I have a lot of them and they, they've needed to go away for a long time. That's probably not the drunk drill bit. And this is not a drunk drill bit. Well, that's going to get us a little further. Probably not going to get us where we need to go. But let's just keep chugging away at it.
I'll just keep these out. Because I'm probably going to need them again. Those are wood bits. Substitute bolt was. And that'll work. Too tight. Uh, let me see if I can find another drill bit. Alright, so I uh, solved that problem. Not sure that drill bit's saveable, but I'm going to keep it anyway. So I went and got my good drill bits that I use for wildlife work, and I think we've got a bit in here. Three eighths and half inch. I think three eighths will do it. Yeah, it needs to be a little bigger. So we will go with half inch. Um, really. A 7 16th bit would be perfect, but I don't have one, so half inch it is. I'm going to use an M10 bolt, that's about the right size. Good.
so now we've got a half inch bolt. And just as importantly, we can get the bolt through. So that was something that I was a little bit concerned about. Um, good thing I made it a little oversized, so it's ready to install. Um, the only question is, you know, do we back it up or not? And I, I think I'm going to go ahead and just pass on the backup. And if it deforms, I deformed it a little bit yesterday. Screw it. I'm going to cut the back up. So let's uh, figure that out. In the spirit of, wow, that's big, we're going to use this piece. And we're just going to cut this out of this. Let me find. The sharp beak. enough this ain't this is not precision work it's not rocket science we are hacking That's going to annoy me, so we're not going to do that. Let me set the plasma cutter up, and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I've got my plasma cutter set up. I'm going to make the best of it. We'll cut on a flammable surface. This is getting to be a little crusty. Cut better with a uh, ground.
little bit more. So I'm just going to slot that. piece that needs to come off right there. personal preference. All right, so this should not be that difficult. Famous last words. popping breakers.
Okay, that looks pretty good. Especially for me, freehand. Functional? Yes. Alright, let's go get it wet. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go... I'm gonna go run it under some water and cool it off. Alright, let's see what this looks like. And what we really want to know... Yes. Yes, that will work. And that'll back that up. That's a quarter inch plate, so that's more than enough. Um, you know, there's part of me that is tempted to just go down the road. change over. I'm going to weld this together. I'm going to actually make a proper weld because they're, yeah, well, whatever. I, I'm going to weld it together. So these bolts are just to hold things together while I weld. So we're gonna make this together. And I'm using my um, Millermatic 211. Why is it? Flashing temperature at me. That's weird. Yeah, that shouldn't be right. It hasn't been running. All right. they use but I'm gonna smoke it off.
bit less. Oops, missed that one. together. I think that is strong enough to be uh, overhung by an inch. Let's make sure we've got a good strong bead. None of this is flux. It shouldn't be. I like that spot right there. Whoops. Touchy, touchy. All right, let me uh, go run this in water. I'll be right back. All right, so that's done. Now we just need to do a little bit of grinding to wrap this up.
almost look respectable. But we know better. Supposedly these are grade 8 bolts. I'm really surprised I could uh, snap one yesterday. They came from Granger too, so they're not just cheap shit off the internet or from Hardly Depot. Y'all missed me grinding it and painting it. Sorry. Okay, well, yeah. All I did is ground it so that it was smooth, and um, then I painted it with Rust-Oleum Rust Performer, Reformer. I'm gonna go see if I can find something prettier to paint the rest of it with. All right, so uh, I need some more parts. Let me get those, I'll be right back. Okay, so I think I'm gonna run a 40, if it'll fit. Uh, I'm gonna run a lock nut, or a lock washer on it. I don't know if this is going to fit or not. No, no, it's not. All right, so we're going to test and see if we've got ourselves into shit creek or not with this size bolt. So that's just really tight. That's fine. Tight's not our bad thing. laugh but that did get it through So the other way this could go is it could go like this. So with that in mind, my, my goal at the moment is just to test and evaluate whether I've got my mechanical alignment set. So uh, I am gonna run that from the top, I mean from the bottom when I install it because I, I want a longer bolt in here. this in. Let's go see how it fits. Okay, so
let's hoist the engine up out of the way. That's not long enough. It reaches just to the edge. All right, so I've got to get this out of the way. Let me see what we can do with that. Of course, the first tool of choice is vice grips. Shouldn't work. But so many things shouldn't work, and they sometimes do. And the second tool of choice. Because we are just simply going to mutilate this out of the way. the right tool for this but it never gets any use so this is a great opportunity
so we got it cut off, but it's not it's not level. And this engine out of the way. That's, that's the simplest thing to do. So inappropriate pulling points 101. created enough clearance. I don't feel like I've got the clearance to get a grinder in here. Let me see what this looks like. This is, really, this is the tool. I just struggle to get in here with anything that's less a grinder. If I take the handle off of it, it gets better. All right, that looks like a possibility right there. So let me get power to it and I'll be back. All right. Oh, so many things that shouldn't get ground so many so little space all right i don't know what that was but something just flew past me oh that was a chunk of the disc it's time for a new disc be right back okay so i'm decided to move that uh, let me put some other stuff in a different location workbench it would be full of shit so god damn it this particular tool comes unplugged every time I look at it although I might have unplugged it to change the disc which would be the right thing to do So that's a 36 grit uh, Harbor Freight disc. So I'm gonna probe. No, oh, I can't feel that anymore, so that's taken care of. Let's go back and do another test fit. one thing it's another all right so that's ficking through that's ficking, sticking through it's crooked it's really crooked um, but I think it'll I think it'll be fine I mean it's it's a goddamn engine mount not the Mona Lisa I'd like it if it wasn't that crooked and that is my fault um, Let me see. Mm. 
Oh, what the hell just happened there? All right. I have no idea why it just straightened out. But it did. So, and I have good access from the side for that bolt, and back there I have good access for that bolt. So this rear bolt needs to go in. Um, that's gonna be a wrench and a socket, a wrench and a socket. So I think this will work. Uh, let me lower the engine mount to see what our side profile looks like. Uh, I'm looking to be sure that I can get the I mean, I don't know why this wouldn't work. What are we hanging up on? Oh, it's, it's hanging up on itself. I'm gonna be exceptionally mad if it now lines up after all of what I just did. got penetration in both. And uh, now it's going to line up where I want it to. I thought for a second it was going to drop back into its uh, where it's supposed to be. And that's not the case. But this, this is going to look good. Uh, You know, it just is what it is. And uh, sometimes we have to make things work. This is a Mexican Jeep repair. And I admire the ingenuity that I see in Mexico sometimes, so it's not a slur. Um, you know, I if I did a Yankee repair, this Jeep would be totaled because we'd be building a new Jeep because we can't have anything that has a scratch or dent in it. And that's why our insurance rates are so stupid fucking high. On the other hand, if we just make it work again, we can do it for a whole lot cheaper. And unfortunately, making it work again sometimes isn't pretty, like this. So what I'm going to do uh, right now is pull that up, um, hit some rust reformer on there real quick while I clean up the shop, and then hit it with some flat black paint because that's... That is the uh, color of this this Jeep spirit animal is flat black, and uh, we're looking good. We've solved this problem. This too shall pass, and stop being a pain in the ass. Yeah. 
flat black magic. I think that's the end of that can. All right, thanks for watching everybody. Uh, we'll pick this up tomorrow and I think we'll have the engine on its mounts tomorrow and the hoist and the stand out of here. Wow, that's exciting.